Hi everyone, Kinfinity here, and here are my top 10 faith-based movies, starting off full force with Facing the Giants, Coach, one and only, Adam Taylor, Grant Taylor, <laughs> see, just overcame, just like how Grant has to overcome the car not starting, <laughs> him and his wife. You no, know, still trying to have their baby. The team that he coaches, he's coach Grant Taylor. <laughs> Getting, you know, back on top of all of the, <laughs> this region's championships. So his team being back on top in the stay everything while his assistant coaches are becoming even more amped up. Oh, man, why is Grant out? You know, he should be here by now. Man, he's not going to go get some hair extensions or hair blood. <laughs> but so glad that finally, especially a couple of the players specifically, finally grow in their faith. And they keep going. You know, literally this one who is... You know, like the team leader, he is team leader, and he needs to stop worrying about serious humor and be serious about <laughs> praising the Lord. God never fails us, so win, praise him, lose, praise him, no matter what. So it's literally Coach Grant Taylor, <laughs> assistant coach Brady, and another one that's too unforgettable. <laughs> All of them working together. We. David, who is a soccer kicker, becomes a football kicker, works with um, the head of the team, Brock, who becomes more of a team leader, how these coaches, they become stronger in putting their full faith in the Lord to help the team and how the team grows in faith. And one of them specifically in respect, how all the team members grow stronger in being part of the team in knowing that they can do anything through faith, in understanding family members. So from the coaches becoming stronger in faith, the whole team becomes stronger in faith and do everything to the honor and glory of God. So you got to see <laughs> all of the using Matthew 7, 13 and 14 specific examples. You got to see everything is so powerful, of course. So that is going for the championship, winning in faith. Next is Time Changer. Unbelievable change in society, America alone. Because in 1890, we meet Professor Russell Merritt, who is a Bible professor at a seminary. And things are going great with him working with his colleagues on this new book. But one of the colleagues named Norris notes how... Uh, Russell, he needs to focus more on the Lord, the name Jesus Christ specifically emphasize it and not just focus on, you know, not taking the Lord's name in vain, not just thou shalt have no other gods before me, but specifically notifying how it's Jesus Christ before you say any of the other gospels, any of the other truths. So, notifying how it's Jesus Christ before you say anything else. And Russell, you know, it's like, come on. Like, who else? No one else say, verily, verily, I say unto thee, must be born again. No one else says that. No one else said that. But um, literally, <laughs> from, you know, Russell going back home, things being okay. This one neighborhood troublemaker kid learns his lesson. Uh, at the end, after Russell goes through this experiment, so he meets back up with Norris, and Norris has this experiment for Russell to travel through time. So, yes, yeah, so Russell actually does travel through time, and this is just a top 10 list, so here comes the rest of this one. <laughs> here comes the rest of it, so I can move on to the next one. So, um, yes, Russell actually travels to this film, had to have been made back in 04, 2005. So he goes then, and I want to say it's New York, it's a big city. And his purpose is to, you know, spread the name of Jesus Christ, see how things are different. And to meet a Christian librarian to help give him some information. One that Norris met when he time traveled. I won't say too much more. Yes, yeah, so Russell, he meets one only Eddie Martinez. 
They have a better fold in this laundromat. The <laughs> Mises man works in the laundromat, tells him about Jesus, finds out that Ed, he finds out that Eddie doesn't go to church. So then Russell he meets a man who's getting divorced through his wife. What? Because you know, 1890, you know, things were so you know, so much more, you know, in reverence in the mainstream. You know, more of society, you know, everyone, more of everyone, you know, was Christian, more of everyone was, you know, you know, devoted to God back then. There wasn't all of the other distractions that, you know, developed later on with advertising, TV stuff. So you were much more, more people, even more of the overall population were devoted to God. So it's like, what? Game changer and how these two young ladies need to get out of this 50s diner. Well, he's even learning what the 50s are, 1950s are. They need to get out of these 50s diner and, you know, go back home to their parents. These teenage girls trying to go crazy. You know, so um, Russell, he learns that, yes, you need to literally tell them Jesus Christ. Give them Jesus Christ. So that they change from not going to church, divorce, trying to be crazy teenagers. So he sees how these people need to change by knowing Jesus Christ. Not just, uh, you know, um, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, all thy soul. Not just that, in the exact order that it is. <laughs> not just that, but for them to know Jesus Christ, like not just know, you know, uh, behold, I give unto thee powers to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, that these by any means hurt you. And I got to move on. <laughs> but this is what you need. You know, you can't just have that fact. You got to have that. It's Jesus Christ. So you learn how you got to give, how is Jesus Christ? And uh, while he goes with this church uh, to people's houses, get to know them. He sees how his son is disrespectful to his mom, telling him to turn down TV while the pastor is talking to his parents about the church stuff and how the church has to give him incentives, uh, incentives like, yeah, we take this trip to Six Flags every year. Yeah, yeah, we go to this, this awesome camp, you know, instead of it mainly just being them, you know, learning about God and, you know, going on missions, uh, Bible study, you know, doing things for God. And not just all these fun things in between. You know, all these incentives. Yeah, so Russell, he realizes how, yes, he needs to tell them about Jesus Christ and all of the truths uh, that we know of from Jesus. And Jesus being with us with the Holy Spirit and through the Bible. So he learns how you got to have, tell them about Jesus Christ first. And then everything else. And you got to see these two troublemakers who find out that Russell is actually from 150 years earlier. And you got to see, because like, Russell, he has no warning of what 2005 is like. So he um, gets this hotel room, oh uh, yeah, motel room. And, you know, um, the concierge shows him, oh yeah, this is the TV. TV, television, <laughs> stereo. <laughs> what is this? And I'm at this hot dog vendor. Come on, buddy. What do you have? Have a hot dog, please. You know, it's so proper. <laughs> you know, if you were more proper, you know, in the society, even America. <laughs> even, you know, mainstream America was more proper. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, what do you want on it? The works? Is that customary? Huh? I guess. Come on. What do you want on it? <laughs> you know? What do you want to drink? Tea? Tea? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's so different how everyone was back then. So, yeah, it's Russell, you know, finding out how different 21st century is. And just he needed to already, even back in his own time, because he was a Bible professor, even back then, he needed to tell the name Jesus first before going into the truths and going into the specific commands, the highest commands that you shall love thy neighbor as thyself, for this is the law and the prophets. So he needs to tell them about Jesus first before he tells them those laws and everything. Yeah, so it's amazing and very unexpected. Next is prayer never fails. These schools, man, crazy. He has how this coach you know, has a student who desperately needs to, you know, stand up needs to overcome what his father and you know everyone else in the schools 
trying to make him think is acceptable. But the coach, you know, prays with the son. One of the other teachers sees them praying. Doesn't like that, of course. But this young man needs it because his father is so headstrong, you know, and doesn't, you know, he, want, he wants his son to, you know, reach a certain level with being on the basketball team and, you know, being a, you know, a, you know, pro and everything in high school. But the son learns from praying to God and from the coach that all that matters is doing things for God's glory, doing what God has for you to do. That's what matters. But school doesn't like that. So this coach meets this dedicated but need to get out of gambling, lawyer. So they start working together. Yes. The coach works with Mr. Brown. And yeah, I know um, you will see all the awesome names. So right now it's Coach Lawyer Brown <laughs> right now. And Lawyer Brown has a sister who he's helping out. She has a restaurant, cafe. So it's really the coach and Mr. Brown, you know, getting out of this case. And, uh, you know, proving how it is important. You know, like, yeah, just if students need it, students to be able to overcome whatever problem it is, you know. And prayer is how, all I'm going to say is prayer is how the coach, you know, <laughs> you know, is able to stay strong by praying to God. So how they win the case because, you know, the student need to help with the situation. It needed to overcome. So that's all I'm going to say. Because I know these schools. <laughs> but I have next. You're an overcomer. Ooh. Yes, this dedicated coach. <laughs> it looks similar to Grant Taylor. <laughs> but this is your good man, John Harrison. You'll see it when you see it. This coach is a dedicated basketball coach. Come on, come on. But some of the athletes are going out to other schools, are leaving, going to another town. Yeah, so a basketball team is dwindling while he's also a history teacher. Yeah, so it's not good. One of his sons is one of his players, at the very least. But, um, yeah, you know, um, yeah, the players are leaving. It's no longer basketball season. Like, what are we going to do now? So um, the principal tells Coach Harrison how the only alternative is Cross country? No. I don't even like running. Well, this is what we've got. Come on, it'll keep you in shape. It's good for the school. So how Coach Harrison becomes the new track, uh, cross country coach, cross country specifically. Yes, yeah, so how he learns the differences in cross country. I <laughs> learned how you do cross country. Yes, his sons, you know, are by his side while... Well, his oldest son, Dylan, who was uh, on the basketball team. Yeah, oldest is Dylan. Should be. Um, he didn't really want to run cross country at first. Blair changes his mind. But um, John, you know, wants his son to continue to focus on basketball. Because John doesn't want to do cross country. But his wife, like, come on, what the school needs. Well, in the meantime, this young girl, Hannah... You know, um, she's seeing some young men playing basketball. It's at the park, you know, it's out in the street stuff. No, in a park, not on the street. You know what I mean? <laughs> so um, she is having a hard time with, you know, <laughs> with, you know, fully letting go of taking stuff because she takes this young man's headphones and um, hides it in her room. But her grandmother... You see why her grandmother is even more no nonsense later on, but grandmother, I know you stole something, Hannah. Take him back. Now I'll be home around ten. Dinner will be on the stove. You know, Anna, you gotta learn. Yes. Now this school is gonna be really good for you to go to Hillshire uh, Christian School. Oh, that is the that is really close to what the name is, Hillshire, right? <laughs> Hey, you're, you're, you're crazy? Uh, I'm going to say he'll shy. <laughs> yes, and um, yeah, so Hannah goes to the same school that coach coaches at and everything. And um, yeah, she becomes the only member of the track, t of the cross country team. In the meantime, Coach Harrison has to go to the hospital because his church does visitations. So uh, he 
actually, he literally, um, because the, the hospital staff is moving some beds through, like, he literally gets pushed into a room, because, you know, he has to go to the side to get out the way of the hospital bed, so he gets into a room of this blind man, older man, named Thomas Hill, so, um, yeah, uh, yeah, it's just, yeah, because the pastor was visiting with some people, but John wasn't visiting with anyone specifically, so Thomas could long visit with me. <laughs> so yeah, he really gets to know Thomas. Thomas really gets to know him. And, you know, asks, asks John to pray for him. Yeah, and so they do get to know each other, coach. Yeah, you know, and who are you? Yeah, come back to that later. Yeah, so things get better with Hannah because she is a good runner. Yeah, yeah, could a little bit more better form. And she has asthma. It's okay, says the principal. She just has to have an inhaler with her. So, Hannah becomes an awesome cross country winner because she's the only one on their team, you know? And their sons are super supportive. I mean, yeah, Dylan, the other teenager, you know, he comes around to wanting to run, but it's still only Hannah on the team. And her younger son. It's the idea of adding balls to... Yeah, he's used to all the other sports. He wants to add balls to cross country, too. You know, um... So, yes, John becomes even stronger with his wife. Who's, you know, trying to help him and, you know, God, and help him see that this is good. You know, for him. Yeah, you know, to continue to coach and inspire through this sport. Well, um, she's also a teacher at the school. She's a science teacher, and she has Hannah in her science class. So, so the wife is motivating John to keep going. While um, John, his wife, everyone finds out that Thomas is actually Hannah's father. I won't go too deep into it, but um, his, her grandmother have would have nothing with that because uh, her grandmother is her mom's mother. It's because of Thomas that her mom. You'll see, it's not around. So she's very bitter, very resentful to Thomas, of course. But it's, it's, it's all about her learning to forgive. You know, and everyone learning to forgive and become stronger, like it says in Ephesians 2, who we are in Christ. So how they all become stronger. First, from forgiving each other and from accepting Christ and how you all become overcomers. You know, John having to now coach this, he doesn't like. Hannah overcoming stealing, having asthma, these problems. You know, the grandmother overcoming, being bitter, you know, against Thomas. And Thomas forgiving himself. Because when he was younger, he, you know, thought he was a big, because he ran track cross country. He thought he was a big, you know, he didn't have Christ. That was a big star, but... After this accident, and you know he became blind and everything, then he be, then he gave his life to Christ and everything. So, being able, forgiving everything, and going to Christ with everything. So it's powerful, of course. Yeah, it's gotta be overcomers. Next is God's love. Yes, this dedicated teacher has a dedicated wife who is who is a leader who is. The teacher in charge of the of God's love after school, and some of the parents are like, "Come on, we don't have to have this at school, come on." But yes, yes, children, you know, these kids need to know, you know, that they are strong, that they are overcomers here. <laughs> so how some of the you know some of the parents are against it, but the principal understands it and is for it and yeah the husband came with the wife to this meeting and they have a daughter yes um please let it be her name will be right here so sweet <laughs> and yeah and she knows mark eleven twenty five by heart so yes so this husband and wife has been a little while i've had the names so this husband and wife <laughs> are now driving home from this meeting but it's an accident the wife sadly doesn't make it. So the husband takes over the Bible club, the God's club at school. And yeah, there's this teenager named Nick. He thinks he's super cool. And these popular girls think they're cool. And um, 
the the new I'm gonna, I'm gonna just call him by the actor's name Stephen, who becomes the new <laughs> leader for the Bible Club, and his daughter, I want to say it's Sarah, right here. Yeah, all their names will be here. Yes. So yeah, because they were because it's mainly because of his wife, her mom. They were already strong in the Lord anyway, and everything. But yeah, these parents do, you know, so crazy. You know, how they really just keep it in church. But no, they realize how you need God. And at the very end, I'll get to that. But yeah, especially Nick, because he has to go to therapy. His dad is really hard on him. You see that it's actually the same dad from Prayer Never Fails. Just, just too good at playing this, you know, needing Christ, serious, <laughs> hard on his son. He's really good at playing it. Yes, yeah, so um, how Nick, you know, he comes to Christ with the help of Sarah. And yeah, everyone in the God's club, God's club, how they all, because all of them, like, like it's, it's really only Sarah who already is fully a Christian. Like everyone else, like they go to this public school, like, ooh, what's this? Like what? He came back from the dead? Like they're learning this for the first time, you know? So it's even more awe-inspiring how Stephen, who <laughs> call him, and uh, Sarah, they help them and really guide them to get to know God for themselves and stand up for God and learn how to fight. Because yeah, at the end, they read from Ephesians 6, how, you know, we fighting against, you know, the principalities, against the, you know, against spiritual wickedness in high places, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. How they learn that and how they all grow stronger by keeping this God's club in the school. It's so cool, of course. Next, it is War Room. This dedicated real estate agent, you know, is enjoying you know, getting to know this family. She um, you know, assesses the house of. And, you know, tells them how she is equipped in her job and everything that is. But at home, you know, her husband is always out traveling because he's in pharmaceuticals. Good thing that's the main reason. <laughs> you know, yes, um, the wife's name is uh, Elizabeth. Yes, wife is Elizabeth. Uh, this comes in handy. Elizabeth, yes. Yes, the wife's name is Elizabeth Jordan. Her uh, husband is Tony. Yes. And yes, Elizabeth is very hardworking. She, you know, she, she, loves, she loves God, goes to church, but she can be stronger in her faith walk. Yes, and um, Tony, you know, he's a big shot, you know. <laughs> he's a pharmaceutical salesman. And um, he, then he goes to the gym. <laughs> I didn't mean to have these out here. There's just some weights. But then he, uh, he goes to the gym with his best friend, who is hilarious. <laughs> and who is true. Yep. Let Jesus come into him. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Tony is being a big shot with his friend and everything. While at home, uh, Elizabeth is taking care of their daughter, Danielle, sweetheart. Who wants to join the jump rope team, double dutch team at their school? Yeah, it's so cool. Yeah, they do competitions and everything. So, yeah, Tony and Elizabeth had a riff because mainly because Elizabeth's uh, sister, her husband, Elizabeth's brother-in-law, hasn't had a job, and you know Elizabeth has been helping them out a little bit. And Tony, you know, serious, you helping out? And of course, I know I, re I reviewed this, right? I reviewed War Room, right? Uh, here's the link. <laughs> Everything. Yeah, here's the link for all of them, of course, that I've reviewed already. Yeah, but, um, yeah, so, yes, yeah, so there's a rift between Tony and Elizabeth right now. But, uh, Elizabeth now has to go to Miss Clara's house, see about her house. Yes, yeah, uh, her being a real estate agent. And Miss Clara is a strong woman of God, prayer warrior specifically. And, you know, victories are won by accident. You have to go to God. You got to have your battle plan. You got to have your battle strategy by praying to God in your war room, in your prayer closet. So each time Elizabeth comes to Miss Clara's house, Miss Clara gets to know Elizabeth 
and she helps Elizabeth sign her own war room prayer closet so that she's not lukewarm. And oh, honey, it's got to be hot. <laughs> got to be hot for God and everything. So, um, yeah, she helps. Um, yeah, she helps Elizabeth grow stronger. Definitely. So, yeah, Danielle is also having fun with her friend. Um, yeah, she's so sweet, too. Um, called, I think it was Jennifer. Yeah, so Danielle and Jennifer, you're having fun. And then, you know, Jennifer being over. You know, man, it's never like that in my house. Because yeah, um, Jennifer was telling Danielle a funny story. But, you know, at uh, Danielle's house, you know, Tony and Elizabeth, you know. So, yes, uh, Elizabeth is fighting for her marriage. And tells Tony what she would like. Nice hot pot Sunday. Uh, and your know, Tony's like, what's going on? Well, you know, he's being pulled away not only by his job. It's not really his job, really. But he's being pulled away by this other woman that he's been seeing, working with. No, cannot do that. Literally, cannot do that. So how he, how he realizes that, that, you know, they've been drifting apart. And that her junk, you know, her baggage, her stuff, became his baggage when they got married. So... How they need to stay together, work together, you know, help help out her sister, her, you know, her, her husband. And for her, for her and Tony, for Tony, Tony needs to realize that both he and her need to, you know, work on everything together. They need to help each other, support each other, give each other what they want. And yeah, he helps Danielle and Jennifer with their jump roll team. So Miss Clara, she not only gives you know, <laughs> Elizabeth, you know, some what that's being a client, but she guides Elizabeth on how to become a prayer warrior and continuing the pray without ceasing. Because men are to always pray and not to faint. You know, she really guides and helps Elizabeth finally give everything to God and change forever. By giving everything to God. Her family is a family again. Her family is together. They've given everything to Christ. And she will continue the fight in the war room. So, of course, it's awesome. Of course. Yes. And I just love going through these. But a while since I've done one of these movie lists, you see. <laughs> yes. Next, we've got I'm in love with a church girl. Yes, yeah, so we've got, man, the serious gangster trying to, you know, continue to be a gangster. <laughs> Miles Montego, you know, he's in this terrible business on the streets, got terrible friends, you know, not supposed to be with. And, you know, the police are on him, especially this one officer played by Steven. <laughs> the same Steven. You've seen these movies, you know what Steven it is. Is um, on his tail again. But um, in the course of all this madness, Miles meets a uh, church woman <laughs> because uh, Miles, he goes home to his mom and pops and his mom wants to see him in church again, wants you to meet a nice church girl finally. Yes. Yeah, so Miles finally is back into the church, no matter the music, <laughs> finally changing before the best message comes later on. So at church, he meets Vanessa finally, who is that dedicated church woman. And her family is dedicated to church, has a sister. And uh, Miles he goes out to a barbecue that one of his friends that used to be shady, you know, has. And the friend is now one with the spirit. So, the <laughs> one with the Holy Spirit. So, Miles is finally changing forever. So, he gets to know Vanessa. And she tells him about Equally Yoked. We have to do with eggs or something silly? No, silly. Look, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 6.14. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness? Oh, <laughs> he understands. You know that they, in order for them to be together, they have to be equally yoked, which means you have to both be, you know, of God. You, you have to both be born again. You have to both be light. You have to both be of the spirit because 
there's no fellowship between light and darkness. No, you know, there's no fellowship between righteousness and unrighteousness. There's no communion between light and darkness. So in order for them to be together, they have to both be light. They have to be equally yoked. See? They can't be together if they're not both. Finally, he's, be he's becoming who he needs to be. Yeah, I used to listen to my mom's Elvis gospel album. Yeah, gospel on Sunday. But now he's one with the gospel every day. So through his friends being busted, taken to jail, and this tragedy that happens to Vanessa, he is just about having, you know, he's losing everything. But he finally goes back to the church and he gives God everything, you know. Yeah, you want to take me? Both the fly. But God changes him. And finally, he learns through going to the hospital where Vanessa is. And what happens, you see how great it is what happens. And so, yeah, she makes it out. She makes it out of the hospital. And Miles has changed forever. Especially with, you know, the, especially with the significance of James 1 and 2. Brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, for the trying of your faith work of patience. So he's been through every trial from the street <laughs> and from Detective Steve watching him. So finally he changes. Hey, he's in love with that church woman. But it's I'm in love with a church girl. <laughs> Forevermore. Next we have Sunrise in Heaven. This dedicated couple is enjoying their day on the beach while driving back. They get in a car accident and the man is now in the hospital while the wife reminisces about, man, she, she gave him every serving back when they first met because he was in the military back in the 60s. And she served in the mess hall. She was a yeah, server. <laughs> so um, she would literally just give him one corn, roast beef. Well, he kept trying to get a date with her. Her hair is very pretty, but she keeps brushing him off. And they, they play big band music, even though this was the 60s, but it still works, you know? <laughs> with the styles. Of, you know, a big band is more like the 40s, you know? <laughs> but it still works. So they play big band music. <laughs> Well, he's trying forever. <laughs> yes, and you find out from a father. Yes, they, they, come on. You know, honey, all that those soldiers care about is being back in the game after being out on the field for months. You know, after them soldiers come back home, they haven't seen a woman in forever, but he's not like that. <laughs> he's not like that, Dad. <laughs> you know, they forget how to treat a lady. You <laughs> know, but it's not like that, Dad. <laughs> it's not like that at all. So, um, uh, you you find out their names. But um, I will just call her the wife. The wife, she reluctantly goes out on a date. I want to say the soldier's name is Steve, I want to say. So, when um, they finally go on a date. And she realizes he's the one for her. And, yes, he is working hard to be transferred so that he can stay here with her. And he can set support her. While in the meantime, his two daughters, <laughs> back, back in the accident, you know, uh, the two daughters come and pray with the mom. And a close family friend prays with the mom. And you find out how they all rise from this tragedy. You'll see. It's so great how they reminisce, get to, you know, know how they got out. At first, her father trying to be controlling. And now him living again. So you'll see what happens. Next is the uphill battle. This dedicated mom is working at her job in this office while her son needs to pull his grades up and keep them up again. While her daughter needs to have no teenager backbiting <laughs> about watching her teenage brother whenever the mom needs her to. You know, because the, the daughter wants to go out with her boyfriend, but the mom needs for her to stay and Take care of her brother, watch him. Because um, the mom, you know, had a terrible breakup with their father, you know, because he wasn't a believer in Christ and he left the mom for it's terrible, you see. Because the only one to utter it. But the mom, she loves the bike. So ever since 
Uh, she's separated from their father. She has loved biking. And she goes up these mountains. It's beautiful where they live. You know, it's, it's one of those states where, you know, in the suburbs, you see the mountains right over the houses. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Yes. So the mom, she is continuing to take care of her family, do her hobby, all these miles up the mountain. <laughs> Well, there's this awesome fellow cyclist. Oh, I should have their names, but uh, you'll see. Or at least, at least I have the poster and I'll point to them. So I don't have to have all the pictures since this is just a list, not a full review. So, yes, um, this man has been also praying to God. You find out a little bit later. But he's been praying for a woman of God and they both start biking together. But um, she finds out something about him. But uh, they get back together. And um, they both help her son. I want to say it's Simon. I want to say it is. So they both help out the son overcome this addiction and get away from these terrible friends that he has, too. These friends trying to get him to stay out, you know, past curfew and all that craziness. So getting him to stay focused. So they get him to come to Christ so that he stays focused, who he has to be. And yeah, this uphill battle. And yeah, the man, he prayed for a woman of God, you know, for God to give him a sign. And she answered that specific sign that you prayed for. So it's powerful. Amazing, of course. God's not dead. This brand new, dedicated freshman in college. Oh, learn from this lecture real quick. That this professor is just trying to get everyone else to not believe in, you know, the overcoming that you believing in Jesus is. Yeah, so this professor is super hard on this young man. I want to say a young man named Shane. And I will call the professor, professor, professor Sorbo. But here comes his real name. <laughs> the character's name. Technically, that is his real name. The actor's name. Yeah, not technically. But this young man, Shane, he has a girlfriend. Things are going great. And first, starting out with his story, he cannot, you know... <laughs> He did not, you know, go forth with what this professor in this class is trying to get him to. So he keeps having a series of debates against the professor. In the meantime, this uh, young Middle Eastern woman on campus, you know, who believes in Christianity, stands up for what she believes in because her family is most lum. So the young lady and so many others, this great classmate of Shane are all coming to Christ, becoming Christians. So it's really Shane going against the professor and even bigger, the media goes against God. So everyone finally changes for the newsboy best concert. <laughs> this reporter is finally changing the media's mind along with the Doug Dynasty bullshit. Yes, Bullseye, huh, never better, confuse the enemy. <laughs> How we already pierced through the enemy. It's the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. Yes, so finally, you know, this God's not dead is finally overcame. Especially for the brother of Professor Sobo's girlfriend. Yes, who is never better, you know, continuing to stand up for Christ. And the, you know, amazing connection that this pastor and his friend gain with everyone else. This pastor is trying to go on this trip, but there's all these delays that happen, but he stays strong in Christ. So they all got to stay strong because God's not dead. He's still alive. How they all continue to give the everlasting fact to everyone else. So, of course, it's powerful. And it's literally the first one. I have honorable mentions. I'm going to just go through most honorably. <laughs> the Secret Life of Jonathan Sperry. The best summer of these best friends having to stay in the diner. Ah, oh, she's here again for you. <laughs> the number one has to be, let's call him, yeah, let's call him Vic. <laughs> she's here again. So how these best friends are finally overcoming the pinball bully. 
trying to stay at that pinball machine. He's not winning at all, but taking them away from the pinball machine. How they overcome the worst bully by going over to this elderly man's house, helping him out, cutting his shard, getting the best homemade lemonade, and lesson on, you know, how you will overcome everything. And heaven is the answer to everything. So please enjoy how next it is fireproof to continue to stick with overcoming what sounds like nagging Caleb. She loves you. <laughs> you love her. It's so powerful how Caleb already, you know, going through these fires. And, you know, number one, Kate, how their marriage is rekindled, how they finally, you know, focus on God being the first member of the marriage, making the entire marriage fireproof. Because fireproof doesn't mean that there will never be a fire, but it makes you strong through the fire. That is how you go through the message. Because next, it's perfectly paired with Courageous. Of going after this worst bandit. Ooh. Like you literally have to lock up everything. When you go to the gas station. This father protected his son. All these fathers are learning and growing. From finally, you know, following the Lord's command. Specifically in Joshua 1.9. Have I not commanded thee to be strong and courageous? Got to do it. Yes, be strong with courage. Commanded you. That's the answer. <laughs> and it just shows how you've got to enjoy every second you have, you know, in this life. And continue to protect. Know your children. Don't take any, you know, be careful with your kids being with even their friends, parents. Too many things can happen if you're not there for them. So just be careful. And keep being and becoming the father that God created you to be. The, the parent, the strong spiritual warrior God created you to be. Next, it has to be remember the goal and the perfect race. Here is track and cross country. <laughs> but first, it's, it's 1031. What? 1 Corinthians 1031. Whether therefore you eat or drink or, or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. This new, uh, I start out high school coach, you know, finally uh, becomes the coach of this track team in Remember the Goal. And she teaches this team, they're all returning uh, runners, how to, you know, do all to the glory of God. And for them to put God first and to literally start with running at a steady, slow pace build up their speed. One of the girls, you know, she's been past that. <laughs> With all of her, you know, stats and trophies and accolades. <laughs> you know, but um, the rest of the girls, they follow Coach Donnelly, the coach name. So they followed the coach and they remembered the goal. They went in the end. So it's literally not just going slow and steady in cross country and running, but slow and steady when following the Lord, you know, be still and know that I'm God. So being still and following the Lord and, you know, and, you know that builds your strength. You know, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Renew your strength. But and also <laughs> no but and, <laughs> you know, like going slow, you know, literally helps you run better and win these races, all the races. So it's awesome. They win all the races. Ooh, because the race is not given to the swift or the strong, but to him that will endure it. And never better. Then the perfect race is perfect at this college. So, coach, yes, yeah, she becomes a college coach. And she actually replaces a coach uh, who is, you know, on the verge of retirement. You know, he had a heart checkup and want to keep his heart. Yeah, it's one thing that happened to him. So he's resting. Coach Donnelly's taking over. And she saw the perfect race. So she helps out Brittany. I wonder that she's had before, but she wasn't in Remember the Goal. She helps Brittany to run the perfect race, finally. <laughs> yes. And finally, Chris, her boyfriend, everyone else learns 
how love runs through the rain, how to truly love what you do and do everything that God is leading you to do. No matter if others make fun of you, like some of the other colleges literally make fun of Coach Donnelly. But no matter what, keep doing what God has for you to do. You already won. So it's so powerful for everyone, but especially kids and teens, learning how to grow in patience and know that they're already a victor. Thanks to the Lord. Yeah, but especially uh, remember the goal. It shows a lot of, you know, a lot of, you know, um, teenage situations, you know, might be a boy or a girl who's trying to get you to come out, but your parents won't let you date. Just being responsible and put up the dishes. <laughs> Never stronger warrior. <laughs> you literally. <laughs> Yes, and you know, helping a friend overcome, you know, something that's not what they're supposed to do. Overcoming something you're not supposed to be doing. So, yeah, that would be powerful. Next, got a matter of faith of Rachel starting college and her not being pulled away from, you know, God creating everything by this, you know, <laughs> you know definitely experienced professor. Yeah, uh, Professor Wobi, because uh, her dad and mom, especially her dad, just wants to make sure that the professor is not swaying her in the truly believing that evolution is anything. <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> I'm always oh, God, you know, how I am. So, you know, she is, you know, um, growing, especially with some friends that she makes, especially one that works on the newspaper. It's a really good friend. And he has actually an earlier connection with her, you'll see. So, grows in faith, works with this young man at the newspaper. And um, the father actually goes into a debate with Professor Wilby. And uh, another professor comes back. Who, a professor who used to teach at the university. It's literally the university. <laughs> it's literally only, you know, uh, it's really only told. <laughs> Is only described, said, as the university. <laughs> so this, uh, the former professor who used to be there, you know, him and uh, Will, uh, and, uh, Will we used to work together. But uh, this former professor, you know, left after they all switched to evolution. But he was able to come back. And you see how he gives powerful argument for the glory of God. So you got to check it out. Yeah, next is the whole Thief in the Night series. Oh, literally staying <laughs> with your grandma <laughs> teaching you and, you know, go, go, go to this, go to this in the Bible. Yes, yes, it says they're right there in Revelation. So it starts out with this group of friends, Pat, it was Patty especially, and you know, it happened. So, uh, Patty, Jer, her friends are left behind. And now they are more and more, you know, of course, going to Jesus finally. And uh, staying away from Unite. Because Unite is this world organization that's supposed to be like the Antichrist, you know, the Mark and everything. So, they're running away from them. And the whole series is, you know, <laughs> the, the light finally being shone on everyone who was left behind. So then finally, you know, having the light shone on, shone on them, finally everything changing for them. And of course, it's super powerful and it's got some great analogies and examples of, you know, of how you, know, you follow Jesus and everything does work out. You might not see it at first, that first puzzle piece, how this first trial works out. But when you put, when you see all the pieces put together, bam, that's victory. Yes, the passion of the Christ is so deep and rich with how they utilize the language and utilize the ferocity. Uh, even just those street kids who were terrible to the disciples, you know, <laughs> and to, you know, the, the, the actual soldiers and Caesar and everywhere, how terrible they were to Jesus. It's just, you know, it's just so visceral and it's such a strong telling of just the torment that Jesus, not just, you know what I mean, the torment that Jesus went through and everything. But there is also the greatest story ever told. And I love how the greatest story ever told is a little more personal. 
And they literally go all the way back to Jesus being born and how Herod wanted to have all the newborn sons, you know, executed sadly. But I just love how it really, you know, shows Jesus as the kind, but, <laughs> you know, powerful son of God, God in human form that he is. Yes, of course, it's different, completely different time. And, you know, don't want to zone out too much how they talk about the eyes and stuff. But, you know, you see in greatest story ever told how Jesus uses his power in a kind way. He's the lion and the lamb. Yes. And, you know, Passion of the Christ. It's a uh, it's a little bit more direct with how Jesus is, you know, of going to the disciples and father forgive them. They know now what they do. It's a little bit more naturalistic. Yeah, how Jesus goes to the Father. Father, forgive them. But they know now what they do. But they're both powerful. And they both show G how Jesus is love. How he is. You know, he is strength. You know, he's all of those things. So you see how he uses his strength to reveal to the disciples that Judas, you will betray me. Peter, you will deny me three times. He uses that strength and that love. Like, he's love. But no, this is what true love is. He stands up for what's right. And he tells his father. You know, his father literally is God. He still tells his father, forgive them and everything. Forgive us for what we've done. So they're both powerful. Next is Between the Walls, which is a powerful coming back home and finally being at peace with someone who did you wrong. So good. And here's the rest of them as I'm closing. <laughs> but there are just so many. If I would just name a good name, it always is survival. Oh, so many great ones. It is always never better. I'm learning from this heavenly deposit. It is. Yes, let go, let go. There's so many great ones. Yes. So, please keep enjoying how I cannot lose out without confirming. <laughs> how there's so many similar ones to these two. They're all so powerful and great. Yes, of course. One more round. There's so many good ones. That literally is one of them. Yes. There's just so many great ones. You know, some are similar, but it's the Lord. Yeah, Redemption Road was a good one about helping a friend out. Time of need. So many great ones. Yes, Faith Song about moving to a new town and God using you in unexpected ways. So many great ones. So please check all of these out. And even if, yo, yo I just don't have to, you know, just line myself up. <laughs> with all of this coming to faith, you know, I don't watch these faith stories, but watch these character changes. See how, you know, by coming to God, by letting Jesus in your heart, by having faith, how everything does change, how everything changes. So see how these situ focus on the characters and the situations and how they change. But if you're already a follower of Christ, Praise the Lord. You're just loving it even more. You know how God is already working out these situations. But if you don't really, you know, focus on, you know, these kind of films, then um, watch, the, watch them as films and see what faith and specifically faith in God does. So I love these. There's too many. Of course, I have that breakthrough forever. <laughs> and that was a great breakthrough of him realizing that they are such loving parents, no matter birth or not. They love him forever. Yes. And yet the power of prayer, everything is so powerful. So please check these out in every capacity because they'll change your life no matter what. <laughs> and don't just watch them. But yeah, but really think about what faith and faith in God does. I'm just saying, just give it a try if you want to. So please check it out. Please like, subscribe. Please hit the notification bell so you know when all the new videos come out. And these videos will last infinity.